What do you think, except water, what is the most important resource for some country or community? Gold? Oil? Gas? No, it's oil. In today's video we are going to learn the basic pedological characteristics of our planet. What is soil? What types of soils are there? Which one is the best one? And a lot of other things. As always, before we start, I'd like to ask you for support by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Let's start! Soil is one of the largest and most important of all resources. Quality soils equal quality food, or maybe better to say just food. By soil we mean the loose surface layer of the Earth's crust, which unlike rocks is characterized by fertility. There are many types of soils and their distribution and quality are conditioned by geological structure, climatic conditions, relief, the influence of plants, animals, humans and time. Many scientists believe that the soil cover should be signed out as a separate Earth sphere, called the pedosphere. I already talked about Earth spheres in my previous videos, so be sure to check them out as well. There are many soil classifications, but I'll stick with these two, typical soils and atypical soils. In typical soils we include Hosels, Chernozem, Ranzine, Mara and Brown semi-desert soils, Cirrozem, Laterite soils, Red soils, Verti soils, Swamp soils, Canby soils, Mountain Chernozem and Tundra soils. Hosels represent the most widespread soils. In Europe they occupied the largest part of the forest zone north of the Mediterranean. In Asia and North America, puzzles usually do not exceed 60 degrees north latitude. They can be formed at a moderate annual temperature and abundant humidity. In terms of fertility, puzzles are poor soils. Chernozem is the highest quality soil in terms of physical and chemical properties. These soils are formed under the influence of continental climate and steppe grass vegetation. They are characterized by black color, deep humus horizon and fine crumbly structure. Chernozem is extremely suitable for growing cereals and industrial plants and provides high yields of agricultural crops. In Europe and Asia, it spreads in southern Russia, then in the zone from the Black Sea through northern Bulgaria to the Pannonian Plain. It is also found in North America, Argentina and parts of Asia. Renzines are the soils that are found in pozolic zones in the form of spots that are similar to chernozems in terms of composition. The thickness of the humus horizon ranges from 10 to 80 cm. They are excellent for the growth of grass and forest vegetation. Maroon and brown semi-desert soils are similar soils and make the transition from desert to steppes. They occur in expanses of semi-deserts, steppes and transition to deserts with xerophyte plant cover and in real steppes in south of Russia the Caspian region, Turkmenistan and southwestern Siberia. Their fertility is weak due to the poor physical and geographical characteristics and insufficient humidity. Grey desert land or cirrusms are soils with grey color as a consequence of low humus. They are characteristic for Turkmenistan and Central Asia landscapes. Agriculture is possible only with the use of irrigation. Laterite soils are soils of big areas in tropical and subtropical areas. They are in Europe, Asia, Africa, South America and Australia where are high temperatures, air density and low average temperature amplitude. Their vegetation is usually consisted of savannas and evergreen forests. Their color comes from iron oxide. Red soil or terra rossa belongs to the group of more widespread lands. The red color comes from iron oxides and hydroxides, mineral hematite, hematogelite and limonite. It also contains other minerals in smaller quantities. It was formed by the dissolution of limestone and dolomite under the influence of precipitation and gases in the atmosphere. They are most typical for the Mediterranean areas, but they are also found on all continents. Their typical location is in North Africa, Spain, France, Italy, the countries of the former Yugoslavia, Greece, Black Sea coast and even Czech Republic, Germany and Romania. Vertisols are difficult to cultivate soils of hydrogen origin. They occur in plains and relieve depressions as well as in areas of drained swamps, river terraces and lakes. They are most often formed in the equatorial, tropical and temperate zones and clay rocks, usually of Montmorillonite composition, in a climate characterized by change of wet and dry period. The high content of clay makes them sticky and plastic in the wet state and in the dry state it represents the solid cracked mass. They mainly occur at the altitude of 200 to 600 meters. 
Also, they are distributed mainly in the western parts of the United States, Argentina, Uruguay and India. Swamp soils occur whenever there is excessive wetting of the terrain. They get water from spilling of surface water as well due to high level of underground water in the soil. Continuous retention of water conditions the development of hydrophilic vegetation. Kembe soils are soils that looking at the process of formation are approximately located between podzols and red soils. They are formed on well-drained terrain, mostly on slopes where water does not stagnate. They are most often found under the vegetation of deciduous forests, such as oak and beech. Mountain chernozem is a special type of soil that occurs under the influence of mountain climate and vegetation on the tops of the high mountains. Thanks to conditions that prevail above, such as increased radiation, strong winds, shallowness and permeability of the soil, the soil dries out of high altitudes where microbiological conditions cease and humus accumulates. Tundra soils, translated from Russian, means swamp. These soils are very wet and occur in areas of high humidity and low temperature. The surface horizon abounds in raw humus. The fertility of the soil is not great due to the low temperatures and humidity of the terrain, but certain actions are carried out in order to use these soils. In atypical soils there are five types – Illuvial, Diluvial, Alluvial, Aeolian and Anthropomorphic soils. Illuvial soils are soils that result from the physical breakdown of rocks. Diluvial soils are formed by the transport of material from higher terrains to the foothills. In the upper course there are stones and gravel, while at the foot the material is finer and becomes sand. Alluvial soils are formed by the deposition of river sediments and are formed along the courses of large lowland rivers. They consist of fine silt, but they are fertile because periodic floods enrich them with organic matter and fertilize them naturally. They are suitable for growing vegetables, corn, fodder plants, etc. Aeolian soils are soils formed under the influence of strong winds. These are sandy soils that are not protected with vegetation, which allows them to move due to the winds. They occupy large areas in the deserts of Africa and Asia, but these soils exist in other continents as well. Anthropomorphic soils are formed due to the influence of the human factor. People often use various chemicals for their needs in order to adapt the soil to their purposes. In that case, they are changing the original soil structure while creating a new modified one. Why is soil important resource? As I mentioned, soil produces food, and without it, the life of plants, animals and humans would not be possible. Because of that, we need to be very careful on how we treat soils around us. Unlike other renewable resources, which can be recovered faster, for a layer of 2 to 3 centimeters of soil sometimes is needed up to 1000 years, but usually 200 years, which is still too long. That's why the protection of the soils is one of the most important tasks for us. Soils are nowadays in danger due to many factors like erosion, salinization and similar natural and anthropogenic factors. Erosion is the rapid destruction of the loose soil layer, usually by water. When the water flows and washes the soil, we call it surface and linear erosion. If it's slow, it can be useful for renewing and refreshing the soil. Otherwise, if it's fast, erosion can cause furrows, gullies and ravines in very short time, making the soil unfavorable for agriculture. Accelerated erosion can be caused by humans by clearing forests, plowing meadows and pastures, thus leaving the soil without the protective layer of vegetation. Vegetation plays a very important role in erosion prevention for several reasons. For example, plant roots in the soil act like a reinforcement in concrete, holding the soil in place. In addition, plants absorb the large amount of water that arrives through rain, preventing it from washing away the soil. Deflation is type of erosion that is developed due to wind. It can damage soils when they are dry, especially in phases when the crops are in phase of growing. Soil salinization occurs as a result of uncontrolled and unprofessional irrigation. If an excessive amount of water is used for irrigation, the excess water that is not absorbed by the soil evaporates and increases the amount of salt in the soil. Even a small amount of salinity can negatively affect crop yields. For example, cotton and wheat can reduce yields by up to 50% because of soil salinization. Soil pollution is also a big problem. The progress of civilization made human life easier and many problems have been solved. But on the other hand, this had had an impact on the environment. Many toxic substances enter the soil from factory plants, car, garbage dumps, pesticides and mineral fertilizers, etc. Soil can also be polluted with the help of natural process. 
For example, during floods, water can come into contact with sewage and thus transfer waste water and feces to agricultural land. Thank you for watching this video till the end. I appreciate it. As always, I want to ask you to like, share and comment this video and subscribe to the channel. It takes a lot of time to make these videos, so I'd appreciate support. I've noticed that 90% of my audience is unsubscribed. If you're one of them, I'd appreciate if you subscribe now in order to support this channel and motivate me to do more videos. I started to post shorts more often, so be sure to check them as well. If you have any suggestions or critics, please write them in the comment section. Also I invite you to follow me on social media and feel free to give me some suggestions on which social media to pay more attention from now on. As always, be sure to check these amazing websites. Take care and see you in the next video.